Welcome back to the LEC. SK just secured their fourth win in a row and now are, now own the head-to-head -head against Mad Lions. Now, we're working on some technical issues with SK, but we'll try to get Janax after a look at this game. I'm joined, of course, by the wonderful Kadrol, and we want to start off by talking about the draft. Now, we had a lot of opinions about this draft. I think that our core consensus was that Mad Lions, strong early game, kind of like G2-esque draft, whereas SK, good scaling into the later game, very strong team fighting. Yeah, that's the key point. I think that Mad Lions' draft is very, very uh, G2 orientated, where they have winning lanes and they have a winning jungler so they have to push their advantages and SK's draft is just all about scaling and I think that to me the biggest thing that stood out to SK's comp was it's full team fight that's why I was kind of surprised by the Aatrox last pick I was expecting something more like a cannon which works into the NAR yeah. you can contest top prior so actually have something to play towards uh, but the Aatrox pick didn't stand out to me so good but it worked out in the team fights later on just I think SK this game were just there to basically hold on yeah because when we look when we will look at the early game a little bit later on the biggest problem that SK ends up with is they don't really have winning lanes anywhere yeah. you kind of look at that Callista Alistair and you think to yourself, wow, this is a very strong two versus two, but at level one, level two, like it's not the strongest yeah. all in bot lane. And so uh, Mad Lions had a lot of agency and power in that early game, which what they needed to try and take advantage of. So um, the biggest thing that we felt like Mad Lions had to avoid was kind of like that team fighting in the later game. But do you mm -hmm. think that there was any sort of late game insurance for Mad Lions comp? Or what do you think the big late game problem was for this comp? The biggest problem with Mad Lions' comp is they're all short range. Right. Lucian Kaiser, yes, Kaiser can dive in the back line, but now Lucian Kaiser are three range carries which are all short range with a Lilia next which is also kind of short range you want to flash in and get some sleep so the problem with SK's comp is if you're against Victor ultimate Hecarim ultimate Alistar running at you Kalista in the back line Aatrox in your face it's so hard to do damage when you've got single target damage carries who work well on side lane and 1v1s with very, very little sort of range to hit the champions. Right. So basically what we're after here is Mad Lions want to get an early lead. They want to dominate the side lanes and they kind of want to keep SK as split up as possible. So we're going to jump into our first replay and we're going to explain and identify why Mad actually played a very clean early game. So as our local jungle expert, why don't you explain to us what uh, El Yoya can do in this early game with the Lilia? Yeah, so if you just press play on this clip, basically what he does is he does a quick Raptors clear, which you've seen Lilias do all the time. Normally you expect them to go Raptors to Krugs into their red buff and then go towards the map but he knows that he's going to go to enemy bot side camps because he has three lanes of prior which is the biggest reason he's doing this if tinks even had a ward in his bot side river and he was able to spot out el yoya walking to his bot camps he wouldn't even be able to cross uh, to split the map top side because nara and lucian can just push in the waves and then collapse on him so tinks no matter what is a bit screwed and a bit out of the game here when el yoya does this even if he had the information he can't really prevent this the only real way he stops this essentially is starting bot side as the hecarim which is not what you want to do and you don't want to path away from your Callista Alistar lane, especially into an Aatrox lane where you've got no pry anyway. So this is how, in the early game, things are already looking very terrible for SK. And I loved what Kadra said, because when we were talking about it, I was like, well, as a jungler, when you're in this situation, can you maybe just split the map? And as you rightly said, if you try to split the map against pushing lanes, you then just get collapsed on and then things go from bad to worse. Especially right? when you're playing Hecarim. No flash, you've got no escapes, you don't have an EQ like a Jarvan or a Lee Sin Ward jump, you're Hecarim on the enemy blue buff, the two lanes just collapse and you die. So, the only thing you can do is force a fight, which they then did try to do. Uh -huh. And then we saw a bunch of TPs trying into the bot lane, and then top lane ended up getting destroyed yeah. because top lane then had a slow pushing wave going against him. And like the early game went disastrous for SK ultimately. And so that then put Mad in a fantastic position here at around 19 minutes into the game where they actually start playing through their side lanes very well. Yeah, they get the, first, the all three out towers. It's the tier one mid that gets taken down, the most important tower in the game. And I think the key thing here you have to identify is how they play the map, right? They're playing this one through one esque comp but they're pushing in the waves together and moving to sides together and that's how you want to snowball in the early game in the mid game when you're playing these comps because yes they do struggle in team fights but they can collapse to plays first because they have lane priority so they push in mid and they move five man into bot four one shift into bot get the bot tier two and sk tried to fight yes we have a strong team fight but we're just way too far behind in gold yes gen x's tp was good and the q flash did keep him alive but I think that the team fight itself was just too split up for SK to group up and run at Mad Lions with their ultimates. And in the end, Mad Lions pick up mid tier one, bot tier two, and they get around four kills for this. So I just think the Mad Lions are playing the map really, really intelligently and they're moving around really well. So at this point, we're thinking that the game is pretty much done. We think the Mad Lions are basically won. But one of the risks of Mad Lions comp is that if you do make one mistake, there's a very easy way for SK to come back into the game because of how well they scale, which brings us to our very final play. And what was, we didn't realize at the time, but actually yeah. an absolutely insane play from the SK support. Yeah, you have to understand that the game works around tempo and waves when you're playing this comp. You have to control the whole map and you don't have, you're not allowed to give any control to the enemy team because if they get any vision, they can try to start Baron or they can try to make a pick. And this is what they did. 
I mean, SK made a pick, but they made a pick with no vision. You can see they had one ward in the brush on the bottom side, so they did spot out Kaiser. Right here. Yeah, this, th this one right ward is what all the treat sees, essentially. That's the only thing he sees on the entire map. So if you play the clip, the vision line kind of cuts off around now. So he's basically guessing where uh, Mad Lions' jungle support is, and he gets a double knock-up on his guess. So that just it gets the engage, and then they can run at them with the R buttons, make the engage happen. They get the shutdowns, they get the picks. You can see Humanoid's so short range that he can't actually run away from the amount of damage that SK has. And I think SK, as soon as they get this fight, they get a Baron, and that equalizes the game. And if you give Baron to a teamfight comp as a 1-3-1 comp, you can never get control of the map again, and you can never teamfight either. What, what an insane play from Treats. Like, actually, we, we've been seeing his praises, but to get that blind engage, like, we didn't realize how good it was at the time. But as Kedra was saying, like, this was a team fight comp that SK needed to get online. The only way they could do it was find a pick. And at first, we thought that Mad made a mistake. They made a misstep. But when you look at that vision, they feel like they're safe. They feel like they're secure. Bam! Alistair flashes over. Double knockup without knock headbutt. It's crazy. Blind double knockup without the headbutt. I mean, yeah, honor team. That's, uh, honor treats. Yeah, that is, that is absolutely insane. And funny enough, Key player of the game is, of course, Treat with 84% of the votes. A fantastic performance from the SK support once again, man. This man just kind of came over from NA, NA import, like really popping off here in EU and, and really doing a fantastic yeah, he, he job. He clutched it for his team 100%. He though. certainly did. Now, for more on SK's win, here's Ashley with Genex. Thank you, Vedius. Um, welcome back, Genex, to the LEC broadcast. And I've been told.